Shalom, and welcome to back to another episode of the Biblical Drama. You know, every time I give this class, I call it something else, but okay. We are working our way through the uh, story of David and, um, and no longer David and Shaul. In the last class, Shaul died. And that was at the end of um, it's the book of Samuel, first book of Samuel. And then we started the second book of Samuel. And the first chapter we discussed last week, um, David is in a place called Ziklag with his army and an Amaleki came from the, uh, the battle field. And he talked about how Saul, Shaul asked him to kill him and he did. And then David couldn't handle that. And he, he killed this, uh, this boy because he said, you cannot kill the anointed one of God, regardless of whether he asks. So um, David is very distraught. He recites a, a poem, a eulogy for Saul and for Jonathan. And, um, and that's it. You know, this whole saga, which took a while, and he's running away, and he's, he's afraid that, you know, he's going to be killed, or he's the, all that whole issue comes to a close with the battle with the Philistines, and now David is unsure what to do. And what does he do? Chapter 2, verse 1. David speaks, asks God, what do I do? Which is so beautiful, and this is one of the symbols of David's success as a king, is that he's constantly... Um, calling out to God and saying, what should I do? Okay. Now, um, God responds all the time throughout David's life. God is responding. Now, it doesn't tell us exactly how he did it. Did he do it through, a pri through, through, the, through the priest and the priest kind of had a way to divine what God wanted? Or did he do it when he had a, a vision? The Torah doesn't tell us. But what we know is he spoke to God and he said to God, should I do this? And God responded. In our case, he said, should I go to one of the cities of Judah? In other words, he needs to solidify his throne now that Saul died. And who is going to be the true anointed leader? Now we get into several chapters of, you know, a, it's a very typical uh, um, situation where uh, a king dies and there's a bit of uncertainty. There is an heir, but it's not clear that that's the right heir. The prophet says, you know, the heir should be uh, uh, one. And there's a battle. There's a battle for power. And, um, and that's what we're going to read about here. The, 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 the battle to secure the monarchy and ultimately to unite uh, the, the nation. Unfortunately, it's going to be tragic before it becomes triumphant. So he, should, he says, should I go to one of the seeds of Judah, which was really the, one of the strongest, um, uh, the strongest uh, representations of the, uh, of the Jews in the land. You know, it was in the heartland. It was right in the center, uh, covering Jerusalem and covering the, the south and Hebron. And God says, go to Hebron. David goes to Hebron, he takes his two wives, Achinoam from the Jezreel Valley, and Abigail, who was the wife of Naval the Carmeli. And all his men and all his families, and they moved. Basically, they you know, went to take over this land. They come to, and the people of Judah anoint David to be the king. So that's very positive, right? People must have known about David. And there was a question, you know, would the people of Judah follow, to, you know, follow David's uh, call and, and become, accept him as the leader? Because not everyone did. And the answer is yes. And therefore, immediately, David and Judah are intertwined and they become, uh, he becomes their leader. The question is, will he become the leader of the rest of the tribes? David says, I remember the story of what the people from Yavesh Gilad did, that they sacrificed themselves to go and take down the body of Shaul and bury it pro pro properly. So he sends um, messengers to the people of Yavesh Gilad and said, blessed are you that you did this chesed 
to our master Shaul, and you buried him. And may God continue to do chesed for you. And may you be strong, and may you be uh, um, warriors. Um, and you should know that I have already been anointed king over um, Israel. So, so on the one hand, he you know is telling them, "I want you to know, uh, I appreciate what you've done." On the other hand, he's also you know making a gesture to them to say, "It's time to rally around the rightful king." Um, I was anointed by kings, by, by the prophet Samuel, so it should carry a lot of weight. But the most important personality on the team Saul is a man named Avner, the son of Ner. He was his general. And uh, he went into all the battles with Saul and he was well respected throughout all of Israel. Now, um, Avner does not accept David. Avner says there is a son, there is an heir to King Saul. And even though he knew that God, that David was anointed by God, he chooses to follow King Saul uh, the, to to prep up this uh, the son called Ish Boshet. He brings him to Machanaim, and he makes him the king over the Gilad. The Gilad is on the the west, the eastern bank, and in the north. Um, and all, all, all over the north and the east, he, he, um, he becomes the king. So now we have o o already a, uh, a divided uh, monarchy. We have the king of Judah, that's David, and he's trying to uh, get power and, and unify the kingdom. But then Avner chooses Ishbosheth, the son of Saul, and he is going to be um, the king there. Um, Ishbosheth is 40 years old. And he's ruling for two years, but this, but but it, it was very important always throughout Jewish history. The house of Judah was the dominant house, and Judah fought, was following David, and they, they weren't happy about that. Um, who's Asaf? Hmm. I think we will wait. Now. Um, Yoav, the son of Tsuruya. Okay, we're, we're introducing ourselves to the general of David. Okay, his name is Yoav. Ah, go share, we'll accept. And um, um, they go and they meet in uh, on one side of this rib, of this pool or this uh, body of water. And Avner and his and the, the servants of, of Ishbosheth are on the other side. Basically, you know, you have two opposing somewhat armies who are on different sides of, a, of this body of water that you don't really traverse. And they said, listen, you know, we're going to fight with each other, but maybe instead of a full on battle, verse 14, let the young men come over and sport before us. Now, sport in those days means, means let them battle, okay? Um, and what happens? So 12 men from Binyamin and 12, uh, um, 12 men from the servants of David go into battle. And um, each one grasps his opponent's head and thrust his dagger into his opponent's side. And they fell together that place, which is Giv'on. A fierce battle ensued that day. And the, 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 this was a civil war, basically. And the civil war was basically um, David's army defeated or it's, you know, was rooted, routed the, uh, the Avner's army. And um, they were running after them. Uh, Remember, David's army was a fierce uh, uh, battalion of, of men who, uh, who've been fighting all this time. 
Now, Truya had three sons, and they were all on David's side for now. His son, Yoav, who was the general, his son, Avishai, and his son, Asael. Asael was as fast as one of the gazelles. Okay, So Asael, he wasn't as strong as Avner. Avner was a mammoth personality, and very strong and very powerful, and also wise, as we'll learn. But, Avner, but Asael wanted to kill Avner. After all, they did start a civil war. So he, Asael starts running after Avner. And Avner are kind of trying to shake him off and trying to let him go. But he can't do it. He doesn't, he, you know, he's not, le- he's not letting go. He's not uh, r- stopping to run after me. And Avner says, listen, um, you know, if, if you keep this up, um, I, I don't want to have to kill you. And Asael keeps running after him and keeps trying to catch him. And, treat, and at some point, Avner just takes his spear and thrust it backwards and, and kills uh, Asael. Yoav and Avishai run after Avner, but Avner gets away. The people of Binyamin, they follow Avner and they join you know, one group, a strong group who are fighting against David for power. And this is what's happening, that we have a civil war. Um, it's, not, it's bad enough that the Philistines are killing us, but we're killing ourselves. And at some point, Avner realizes this. And it's a very famous line that Avner says in verse 26. He says to, uh, he calls Yoav, he's through a messenger, and he says, Are we going to just constantly just devour each other? Are we going to kill each other till the last one? You know that it was bitter the last time, and it's going to be bitter the next time. And Yoav said, you know what? Thank you for saying this, because you're right. We're going to keep killing each other, and, and it's got to stop. So Yoav sounded the horn, and the troops stopped, and they ceased fire. And Avner and his men you know, uh, went on, went, went towards his camp. And Yoav um, uh, went back to David and they lost 19 men, including Asael, which was a major loss. Um, but they defeated, they killed 360 men. And they, they took Asael and they buried him in the, buried, the, the burial place of his father. And uh, they finally, by the, they walked all night and by daytime they were in Hebron. They reported back to David, and um, it was, uh, it's, a, it's a, uh, always a tragic occurrence, and it's not the first time, and there won't be 10 times, and there won't be 20 times. There'll be many, many times where um, there's uh, a civil war vying for power, and um, Abner understood this, David understood this. Chapter three, the battle it continues between the house of Saul and the house of David, while David continues to grow stronger and Saul continues to get weaker, or not Saul, but his house. And then it tells us a little uh, a biography of David, his sons in Hebron, his eldest son is Amnon. These are going to be important for our later discussions about David. His next son is Kilav, who was born to Abigail. Third son is Avshalom. And the fourth is Adoniyahu. And the fifth is Shvatya. And the sixth is Yitraam. So David has six sons from a bunch of different wives. And um, this is what you do when you're the king and you have, uh, you know, maid servants and wives and... and, and uh, and you, you build a family and you build an empire. Um, in verse six, there's an internal politics in the house of Saul. Um, this, it's during the battle between the house of Saul and the house of David. Of course, Ish Boshet is the king, but he's not a very 
impressive and not very powerful and not very influential. Who's the influential one? Avner. Now, Shaul, who died, had a Pelegesh, a concubine named Ritzpa Bat Aya. And Avner seemed to have been sleeping with Ritzpa Bat Aya. You could argue that that was a bit of an insurrection. And it's true because when you um, fight against when, when you sleep with your father, your, you know, the, the king's concubine, you're making a bit of a statement. But it wasn't such a statement because people knew that, uh, that Avner was the, the more powerful and dominant one. He was allowing Ishboshet to be the king. Well, Ishboshet didn't like that. Verse 8, he gets very angry. Uh, I'm sorry, verse 7, he, 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 he gets very angry at, at Avner. And verse 8, Avner gets very angry at him. And he says, Harosh Kelev Anochi. Harosh Kelev Anochi um, was a very big insult. Do you think I'm a, I'm a uh, head of a dog? In other words, I, I'm worthless. You, should, you yourself should know that I'm, uh, um, I'm really running this whole, uh, this whole rebellion. He got very upset and he, he says, you know what? Maybe, um, maybe it's time for me to go to the other side. I've been loyally serving your house, your father's house, Saul. And I've never betrayed him into the hands of David. And now you're yelling at me about a, a woman. And I swear in the name of God that I will no longer just like I swore to, uh, to, to Saul, I will swear now to David. He basically, he changed sides, which was basically would have ended the war. I mean, if uh, King, you know, if Avner, you know, the main general who goes over and, and, uh, and uh, flips to the side of David, that's it, it's unifying the kingdom. Um, and that's exactly what he says in verse 10 transfer the kingship from the house of Saul and establish the throne of David over Israel and Judah from Dan to Beersheba. And that's always a sign that we're talking about um, everywhere um, throughout Israel. Okay, Dan to Beersheba. Um, now, Ish-Boshet realized he made a big mistake and he couldn't say anything and he ended up uh, um, um, conceding to Avner. And he... he We'll find out about him later. Avner immediately sends messengers to David, okay? Probably um, incognito, in a quiet way, um, covertly. And he says to him, to whom shall the, long, the long land belong? In other words, how long are we gonna fight like this? Make a, uh, a, a pact with me, and I'll help you bring all of Israel to your side. And David's shocked, and he's so excited, and he says, uh, I'll do so on one condition. I, I will accept, basically, you to come over. You know, I won't have you killed. I'll, I'll accept it if you bring me my first wife. Now, if we remember, King Saul said, Whoever slays, you know, a certain amount of Philistines will get my daughter Michal. And David did it, and King Saul gave Michal away to a man named Palti, the son of Laish. So he, David feels that um, it was unfair. But this was who knows how many years ago. David's still thinking about this, uh, his wife Michal. Well, um, that's exactly what happens. Uh, Avner goes and brings, uh, brings, you know, drags really uh, Michal away, and his, uh, the husband is is crying, and the kids, and it's a very dramatic, uh, dramatic event. But um, Avner said, um, "It's time." He spoke to the elders, and he said, "It's time for you all." to follow David. And this is, this is, could be a great moment. And Avner would become a great statesman in the, in the house of David. 
and they would find a place for him of honor. And he says, now Abner is saying for the Lord. Uh, it's so hard. I'm trying to. Oh, oh, here he is. We're back. Okay. I'm Hi, Rabbi. We're still recording, though. So quiet. I think we're still recording. Um, thank you. I'm sorry the internet is, is so poor, but uh, we will continue on. We are, uh, I hope that the recording got us in the middle of uh, Avner accepting to become part of David's uh, uh, kingdom. And he gets everybody else and all other as uh, parts of the, of the kingdom to, uh, of Israel to accept. And, um, and David comes to uh, Avner in verse 20, comes to Hebron with him 20 men. And David makes for him a big party. Now this seems to be a beautiful moment and a moment that amongst all the bloodshed and amongst all the hatred, you have Avner relinquishing his connection to the house of Saul, recognizing that David is the true um, uh, king, saying, let's stop killing each other. And David accepts him with open arms. Not so fast. Avner said to, to David, I will go and rally all of Israel around you and they'll make a pact with you and you can reign over everyone. And David said, go on your way and go in peace. But the Yoav, who was, remember Yoav, his brother was killed by Avner. So... Uh, when Yoav was told of what happened, that Avner ben Ner had come to the king, Yoav said, it's a trap. Avner is coming and he's going to, uh, he wants to find out what you're doing and he's going to come and seduce you. But it's a big trap, this guy, it's killer. He's killer, he always was and he's always gonna be and he's not for our time. Yoav in verse 26 goes on his own and finds Avner or he sends a message to, to Abner to co meet him in the cistern of Sirah. David knew nothing about it. Abner returns to Hebron and Yoav took him aside with the gate to talk to him quietly. He takes a knife and strikes it, strikes it into his stomach, into his fifth um, rib, which is considered the quickest, a quick death. And he died in the blood of Asael, his brother, really for the blood. In other words, he took vengeance. Verse 28, David hears about it. And he said, I am innocent from this. This was not my plan. I did not engage in this. This was the action of Yoav. And I hereby curse the house of Yoav that there shall be um, never be someone who's not suffering from, from, from this house uh, or slain by a sword. And there's going to be a big curse on the house of, of Yoav as a result of this. And David also tells Yoav, tell all of my people that we have to rip our garments and wear sack and mourn and sit on the floor for Avner because he was a great man. And even the king himself walked in uh, without shoes in front of the coffin. And they buried Abner with in Hebron, and uh, and the king cried and he wept at the at the at the. Uh, that's this is not a simple thing for him to do, but he did it because he realized that he had such an opportunity here. And he had such a strong connection that he created with someone who used to be an enemy. But you can make friends. And then he's murdered. And David makes a eulogy, verse 33. Um, just a small one saying, you know, you were. Um, should Abner have died the death in such a way, your hands were not bound, your feet were not confederate, but you fell as one falls before treacherous men. All the people came to uh, 
condole, uh, give condolences to David and they all understood. And David wouldn't even eat. He was very distraught. And the whole nation in verse 36 understood that David truly wanted peace and truly did not want to harm um, Avner. Um, as a result of this event, um, he, David was very upset with the sons, the boy, the sons of, 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 of Turia. He said, even though I'm anointed, I'm weak because these, these savages of Turia's house are against me and they're going to have to pay for their wickedness. The son of Shaul, remember his name is Ishboshet, heard that Abner died and he was in shock. And all of Israel, they, no one believed that Abner would die. And the son of Saul had two commanders, one named Bana and one named Rechev. They were the sons of Rimon from the house of Binyamin. And they went to Gat and they lived there. Now, Yehonatan, then the son of Shaul, remember David's close friend, Yehonatan, had a son who was... Uh